So we just got done watching game two of the NBA Finals where the Miami Heat went on the road into Denver and stole a game from the Nuggets. And now we're headed back to South Beach tied at 1-1. I'm honestly shocked, especially after that game one. I was like, Denver taking this in four, maybe they're taking it in five. But this Heat team, you cannot doubt them anymore. Before we start talking about the heat though, if you haven't already, make sure you leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. So Jimmy Butler and co, they may have proved their doubters wrong for good last night, but the heat have been proving people wrong this entire playoff run, although didn't get off to a very good start, did it? No, they got blown out by the Hawks. Like that wasn't even close. They were at home. I was like, okay, let's pencil in Celtics versus heat in the first round. And the Hawks said no. And I was like, it's ain't looking good for the heat. No, this was a game everyone expected Miami to win. I mean, the Hawks were coming off a very mid season, not like the heat were coming off a much better season, but everyone acknowledged. Miami's the better team. Atlanta was coming off that weird like two week span where there were Trey Young trade talks right before the end of the season. Yeah, there was just so much going on for the Hawks, but somehow they blow out the heat. And in the second playing game with the Bulls coming off their big win, I kind of thought the Bulls had a decent chance to beat the heat as well. I mean, if DR DeRozan didn't have school, I know they might have won. They were up by three with three minutes to go. And hey, the heat were 28 to 32 from the free throw line. And we saw how good DR was in Toronto. <laughs> Leahy hangs in the air. If you're Chicago here. Oh, wow. <laughs> If she didn't have school, maybe the Bulls are in the finals right now. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I doubt that. No, but. they're not, but, <laughs> but it's fun to imagine, isn't it? Yeah, you never know, but Jimmy pulled out. Playoff Jimmy, he showed up, and that got him to the Bucks. And again, I was like, okay, Bucks are sweeping. Well, everyone thought Bucks were sweeping. <laughs> yeah. They were minus 1,200 to win this series, which for anyone who doesn't know betting odds, if you bet $100, you'd make $8 profit. And yeah, we've said the entire season we were picking the Bucks. We picked the Bucks for the playoffs. We thought the Bucks, like we said, were sweeping this. And in game one, not going to take away from the heat, but that Giannis injury changed everything. It did change everything, although the heat did lose Tyler Hero, who was their third leading scorer. Now, he doesn't have the impact Giannis does. He doesn't True. have close to that. <laughs> but the heat lost a very big player and the Bucks lost a very big player. And God, the Bucks did not play well in this game. They shot 11 of 45 from three. Meanwhile, the heat shot 15 of 25. Playoff Jimmy dropped 35 and the heat win 131 70. It's like, OK, Giannis is out, whatever. The Bucks responded in game two shooting 25 of 49 from three. I mean, you're not going to win a lot of games when your opponent shoots that well. No, that's kind of was like, okay, you know, it was one game, a little bit of a shocker. The Bucks are back. Even without Giannis, they blow him out. But game three, he turned around and they blow out the Bucks. I got to be honest, at this point, I was very much still in the make excuses for the Bucks. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, they still don't have Giannis. They're going to Miami. Miami's going to have their crowd. They get blown out. Sure. Let's see game four. Well, game four happened. The Bucks led by 15 with one minute to go in the third quarter. And then Jimmy Butler put on genuinely one of the greatest performances in NBA playoff history. Yeah, it was incredible. My jaw was basically on the ground this game because I was like, okay, this is where the Bucks turn it around. Again, make some excuses. And Jimmy said, no, we are not losing this series. We are not losing this game. I am taking over right now. Dropped 21 points in the fourth quarter. 56 for the game. Had that breakaway dunk that put the heat up, had those two insane back-to-back -back three pointers. The second one was actually a two, which just sucks in hindsight. But his reaction after he hits that second one, where he's just yelling at the crowd, like, this is my yeah. this is my I'm like, oh my, this man is not human. Bro, the crowd was going crazy. Like just the hype in that building that moment, that was insane. Yeah, and we were still thinking the Bucks were going to we win. We were. For some reason, we were like, you know what? <laughs> they have Giannis back. They're going yeah. back home. They can still do this. No, they couldn't. <laughs> and game five, very much like game four, the Bucks led by 16 with a minute to go in the third. And Jimmy Butler said no. I don't want to give all the credit to Jimmy, but he just has this aura about him that no matter what's going on, no matter the odds, he still believes he can bring his team back. Everyone on the team just needs to make a couple threes and they can come back. They're just insane at not giving up. Well, they just have this calmness about them. Like you just looked out on the court in game five and you could tell just looking at the Bucks, they were terrified. Oh yeah, they were. Just to play basketball, to pass the ball, to dribble, 
everything. And the Heat, they looked like they were playing a mid-January game. Yeah. They looked like they did not have a care in the world out there. Yeah, Jimmy was dropping buckets, and then he was talking shit to Drew Holiday after doing it. Well, he hit that insane <laughs> alley-oop, which, by the way, oh he definitely God. pushed off on Pat Connaughton. But even still, it is unbelievable. And like you said, when he hits that jump over Drew Holiday and just stares a dagger into his soul, <laughs> that's one of those moments where you're just, as a Buck fan, you're like, yeah, we're done. Yep, yeah, not our year after this. We ain't beating playoffs. Jimmy if he's doing this. And the Heat knock off the Bucks. they become just the sixth eight seed to knock off a number one seed. And like right there, they've already overachieved. Already a W for the season after that. Second round though, they get the Knicks in what is actually a pretty solid historical rivalry. Yeah, like the, the Knicks and the Heat have a lot of bad blood. Really though, this was not the matchup that I think anyone expected. I feel like most people were picking obviously the Bucks to win, but yeah. most people picked Cleveland to beat the Knicks. They did. I mean, I picked my Knicks of course. Oh, of course you <laughs> <laughs> Early on in this series, I was like, okay, you know, the Knicks start out game one. The guard was rocking. They were playing well. They were up early again. And the Heat said, we do not care. We'll come back again. Yeah, the Heat just have a knack for comebacks. <laughs> it's honestly quite remarkable. Julius Randle didn't play this game with a sprained ankle. I mean, it feels like he doesn't play a lot of playoff games, even though if he's out on the court. Yeah. He just kind of feels invisible. <laughs> yeah, even if he didn't play, would that make a difference? Yeah, but Jimmy drops 25. The Heat win 108-101. I was like, okay, fine. You know, the Heat win on the road. Jimmy missed game two, though, with an ankle injury. He, though, I mean, they put up a valiant effort. Caleb Martin put up 22, but Brunson, Barrett, and Randle, honestly, very impressive. Impressive. They combined for 79 and the Knicks got a much needed win. Yeah, but then the Knicks come back for game three and four and that was just embarrassing. Like Julius Randle in some of those games were just playing like garbage. Playoff Julius. Yeah, the effort wasn't there and the Heat were just honestly even more so than their offense. We're just locking them down on defense. Yeah, I want to say this is classic Tibbs team like in the playoffs not being able to score over 90 points. Yeah, but credit to the Heat. <laughs> in that game three, they held the Knicks to 86 points on only 30 34% shooting. Like, they were locking them down. And then game four, yeah, the big three for the Knicks show up, Brunson, Barrett, and Randall, they combined for 76. We only get 25 for the rest of the team. Hard to win a game like that. Well, this is what the Heat do so well. They spread the love around. Yeah. They got seven guys that on any given night can get you 15 points. Yeah, and that was the game the Knicks need to win, but the Heat hang on, 109-101. Credit to the Knicks, though, because a lot of people said Heat and five. I said Heat and five. I, I was like, okay, they can get this this one back in the garden. They extended the series, so they didn't just bow out. They played the Heat a little bit tough. And all the credit in the world to Jalen Brunson in game six. Oh my God. For pouring in 41, playing his heart out, but playoff Julius <laughs> Randle right on cue, baby. And RJ Barrett wasn't much better. They combined for 26 points on four of 24 shooting. Again, the Knicks led by 10 early, but Miami's just like, ah, that's no big deal. We can yeah. handle that. And they prevailed in a low scoring slugfest, 90. 96-92. We're at the point in the NBA where 96-92 is low a scoring. This is We're like, damn, no team scored 100? This is insane. Yeah. Yeah, Brunson balled out. He balled out all season, so he capped off his season well, but the team didn't help him, and the Heat fended him off, and they advanced to the conference finals as an eighth seed, as a playing team. Yeah, and the conference finals, this is the point where I think everyone was like, surely. Surely this is, <laughs> this is where the run ends. Okay, you beat the Bucks. You know, Giannis was hurt and then was terrified to play. You beat the Knicks. Okay, that's fine. Now you're dealing with the Celtics who went to the finals last year and the Heat only went into Boston in one games one and two. <laughs> yeah. I remember game one, it was like, okay, like I was hyped. Obviously I'm the Celtics hater, so yeah. I was rooting for the Heat. And then game two, that was just the cherry on top. <laughs> you, you don't expect to get game two, but the Heat were like, we're here. Might as well get games one and two. Miami is one and gone up two games to none. When else does this ever happen so be your mind? Yeah, and I feel like a lot of the focus was on the Celtics because they're the bet they're supposed to be the better team. Like Tatum in games one and two. If you look at the box score, he put up fine numbers. But we mentioned this in one of our other videos about the Celtics. Like these games are games that you have to actually watch the games to get the full picture because Tatum was god awful in the fourth quarter of game one. And again, it's this thing where the Heat in these games, these big time playoff games, look so calm and composed, and their opponents look frazzled. They really do. And it was the same story. People just stepping up for the heat. No hate to Jimmy here, but the rightful Eastern Conference Finals MVP, Caleb Martin, drops 15 game one and then 25 in game two. A dude who 
was in the league a couple years ago. That's what they do. They find these guys on the outskirts of the league and they turn them into quality role players. And they came back home to game three and bodied the Celtics. Yeah. 128, 102. Tatum and Brown were horrific. And the Heat shot 19 of 35 from three. And it was like, okay, we have the final set. It's Nuggets sweeping the Lakers and then it's Heat sweeping the Celtics. But it didn't quite go that way. The Celtics, we've made videos about them. They don't make any sense. They're weird. And with their backs against the wall, they're a decent team. So they were able to extend the series. Yeah, they got game four. And at this point, I was like, okay, it's human nature in game four. You're up 3-0. You're at home. You relax a little bit. I mean, you could tell. You saw Jimmy on the bench. There was he. He was laughing on the bench. He said after the game, he's like, oh, we're going to go to Boston. We're going to win game five. Well, I got smashed again in yeah. game five. <laughs> kind of saw that coming. I was just thinking like, you know, the hype, the Boston Garden, it's going to be there. The Celtics, I can see them playing well off of it. So I wasn't too surprised by that. What I was surprised is game six, just an unbelievable game all around. This is the game of the year in the NBA. Unless we have a better game in the finals somewhere, or unless there's some random regular season game that I missed, this was the game of the year. Back and forth, neither team stars was really playing well. Jimmy was bad. He scored 24 points on five of 21 shooting. But in the end, it is Derek White who comes to the Celtics rescue with one of the most miraculous game winners. Maybe the most miraculous I game winner. So. I, I can't think of one that is more miraculous. I can't think of anything that's more like, how the fuck? Did yeah. that happen? I think that was the most unbelievable end to maybe a sports game I've ever seen. Maybe something else, but at least an NBA playoff game where I just sat watching the screen at the end of the game, just trying to think, how did that just happen? Because Marcus Smart, he shoots that shot. And at first I'm like, that looks like it's going in. And it almost did. Yeah. And then it doesn't go in. You're like, okay, that's game. And even when Derek White put it back up, I was like, there's no way he got that off in time. No, it was late. I thought this is going to be, okay, they're going to go to the monitor. The crowd is going to see it on the Jumbotron. Yeah, go crazy. And you're going to hear that cheer <laughs> and the announcers are going to be like, well, the crowd's just seen it on the Jumbotron. Shot is no good. Miami advances to the finals and we saw that replay and we're like, oh, f he got it off. Yeah, it was the opposite. It looked like the Boston Celtics team was going nuts and I cannot imagine being a Heat fan, being at that game. You're like, we're on the way to the finals. And then you're like, what? <laughs> what just happened? Game seven though, you said it actually <laughs> on our video about the Celtics not yeah. making any sense. You said... I'll play the quote right now. Oh, I think it's, yeah, absolutely on the table. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised if anything happened with this team for the rest of the season. Who even knows? They could get blown out by 20 in game seven. I mean, to be honest, I didn't even pick that. I still picked the Celtics to win this game. Yeah, I picked the Heat. Yeah, you picked the Heat, so I got to give you credit for that. My whole take was literally anything could happen in that game seven. And again, just another unbelievable game for the Heat. You don't expect it, but at this point with this Heat team... Who knows what could happen? Yeah, both teams came out in this game visibly super tight. Like, yeah. they both were a little bit rattled by the stage, the game seven. The Celtics stayed tight, though. And look, yes. Jason Tatum turned his ankle on the very first possession of the game and was never the same, especially on defense. But the Heat keyed in on the Celtics hard. The Celtics scored only 84 points. That is their worst all season by eight. Their second worst was 92. Yeah, that's crazy. This Heat defense had been there before. They got the guys. That zone they got, it's insane. And if the Celtics aren't hitting their threes... Which they weren't. Yeah, they were not at all. They can't really score. Jalen Brown not being able to dribble. That kind of hurts when you got to switch to him as a number one option. He can't dribble. Not the best. Jimmy and Caleb Martin both led the way with 28 and 26. I mean, you said it earlier. Caleb Martin should have been he Eastern should've. Conference Finals MVP. I know Jimmy is playoff Jimmy. He's the team leader. But Caleb Martin was the MVP. Yeah, he deserved it. But at the very least, he put the entire league on notice. If you didn't know who he was before this series, you definitely know who he is now. And most of the focus, like I said before, was on the Celtics choking this game seven. But you have to give credit to the Heat for going on on the road, game seven, hostile environment, having lost three straight games, having zero momentum and bodied the Celtics. Yeah, this is the toughest team mentally I've ever seen. Imagine the pressure of blowing a 3-0 lead, like the amount of just hate memes if you blow a 3-0 lead. Even as the eight seed. Yeah, even as an eight seed, that would never not get talked about. And you come up huge. And if you just look back at the Heat's whole playoff run, like people are like, how are they doing this? Well, I'll tell you how. In the regular season, the Heat were fourth from bottom in three-point percentage at 34.4%. They are number one in the playoffs at 38.7%. They were fifth in offensive rating in the playoffs after being 25th 
in the regular season. This was a team that in the regular season could not score. Hell, they were dead last in points per game in the regular season. And now all of a sudden that is playoff time. They're getting contributions from all over the place again without Tyler Hero. Yeah, it's insane. Honestly, big shout out to Duncan Robinson because that dude was getting <laughs> flamed and dragged he was for getting, the past two years. He was getting DNPs yeah, because he was, he was such a liability. And now he's just showing up, just draining threes again. Like somehow in the playoffs, he's able to elevate his game. I don't know how he does it, but shout out Duncan Robinson. And going into the NBA finals, I mean, the Heat were huge underdogs again. I, what, what's new at this point? Yeah. They've been underdogs in every <laughs> single series. But in game one, this was really the first time that you looked out on that floor and you're like, he can't score. This Denver Nuggets team just looks different. Absolutely. But God, they need to start scoring the ball. Bam was really the only guy in game one who played well. He dropped 26 and 13 boards, did a lot of damage from the mid range. It was so refreshing to see a player shoot mid range <laughs> yeah. shots, I gotta say. But they were 13 of 39 from three. And boy, Denver's size visibly bothered them. The Heat were not in interested in attacking the rim. They only shot two free throws, two in the entire game. Well, yeah, another thing is Miami has that amazing zone, but how do you break a zone? You get a center that can pass. And boy, can Jokic pass. <laughs> yeah, and a bunch of shooters around him. And that's exactly what the Nuggets have. So the zone was still, it did a little bit, but I don't know if they're going to be able to rely on that zone the way they did against the Celtics or the Knicks or the Bucks. Well, they also, they finally had a game where their role players really did not step up. Caleb Martin, after yeah. his incredible conference final scores, only three points. Max Struess tosses up a bagel going Yikes. 0 of 10. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Those guys have lived on the big moment so far, but the NBA Finals is a whole different stage. Game two, though, I mean, coming off game one, people were saying, I mean, people were overreacting, of course. People were like, oh, it's going to be a new. sweep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a sweep. It's over in five. But I really didn't expect much from the Heat in this game, and boy, they came out on fire. Yeah, they came out from the jump with the intensity, and this is really the game they were going to have to win. Like, game one they're tired the elevation everything it makes sense game two they came out and they knew they needed to get this one and a big decision from eric spolster to start kevin love i mean you wouldn't think starting old kevin love would be a huge decision but he gave the heat a ton of size he gave them much needed rebounding he was their leading rebounder in only 22 minutes played great adjustment from eric spolster obviously he's just a genius coach because they kind of got dominated inside in game one it was Jokic feasting then you had aaron gordon feasting so they need to counter that with some socks. The Heat, though, they led by 11 early, and then Denver had an amazing second quarter. They led by as many as 15 in the second quarter, but the Heat chipped away at the lead, and the Nuggets only led by six at halftime. Yeah, during that run for Denver, I was like, here we go again. This yeah, is going to exactly. be another blowout. They were hitting every three. Just the momentum they get on these runs and the transition threes they hit. I thought, yeah, this is another blowout, but credit to the Heat. This team just never gives up. Even when Joker is dropping buckets on you in the third quarter, because, <laughs> oh boy, he was doing that eight. 18 points in the third quarter really to keep the heat at bay like there were a few times where it felt like okay the heater get within you know two to three points maybe they can finally take a lead every single time it seemed like joker came down and would just hit either a crazy layup or like a step back jumper or a three yeah they spoiled joker's legacy game this was gonna be one of those games you look back on where joker gets like 45 points and it's a legacy game but the heat just completely spoiled that in the fourth Oh, the fourth quarter. Gabe Vincent was dropping three-pointers. Duncan Robinson came in at the start I of the fourth, <laughs> scored 10 <laughs> points in two minutes. This dude, Duncan Robinson, just makes no sense. The finals, anytime he's in the finals, he shows up somehow. After the dude was getting DNPs for most of the year, now he's dropping 10 points in the fourth quarter of a finals game. Hey, he's instant offense. That's what he does. Jokic for the game dropped 41, but the defense on him made it so difficult for him to pass the ball. For a guy that's been averaging double digit assists, he only got four this game. And really, that's what you have to do. You have to say to Joker, you know what? If you're going to beat us, beat us scoring. You're not going to beat us by finding your teammates for wide open threes. Yeah, Jamal Murray was okay, a little bit bad. Michael Porter Jr., he was trash this game. Yeah, he was terrible. And yeah, you said it. It's a great strategy. Make the other guys beat you. Jokic can get his, but you can't let Michael Porter or Aaron Gordon or Murray go off too. Then you're in trouble. I tell you what, I really thought playoff Jamal Murray 
Murray was going to send this game to overtime at the end. He hit those two threes to get the lead down to three, and he had that one at the very end. I was like, that's going in. Yeah, it just felt like that. Like, Murray always hits these tough contested threes. When he shot that, I was like, this is in. We're going to overtime. But no, he misses and the Heat. An unbelievable win. And now they're going back to South Beach for game three. Are they in control of this series? I think they have to be. They took home court. I still don't know. I expect the Nuggets to bounce back. But at this point, like we've been saying in this video, you cannot keep doubting the Heat. The Bucks did it, the Knicks did it, the Celtics did it, and to some point, the Nuggets probably did it, and all are paying for it. That's the video, guys. Do you think the Heat have taken control of this series? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.